This is the 2021 Camaro convertible. Now this is a 3LT with a V6. They do come with multiple different engine choices and its direct competitor is the Mustang. How does the Camaro compete with the Mustang? We're gonna take it for a drive and you're gonna come along. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time to the channel, we do a lot more than just cool car reviews. We give you first looks of new vehicles as they come out and we give you car smarts because we believe knowledge is power. Make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. This is the 2021 Camaro 3LT convertible. So that means it has a V6 as an option in the RS package. It's also available in a two liter and then you can step up to that high performance motor, but that's gonna be in a completely different review. We're going to look at 3LT and how it compares to the Mustang convertible because really there aren't any other competitors other than maybe the Challenger or the Charger but they're not available in a convertible so that kind of leaves you into two categories. Now before you go to the dealer they're going to try and sell you on this vehicle because that's their job. We're going to give you information in 10 different categories so when you walk in you have some information that they may not tell you and then you can make a good choice and have car smarts. We're going to cover 10 different categories. Performance, handling, safety, visibility, seating comfort, technology, features, design of this new vehicle, quality, value, and cargo space. And in the end, we'll give you a car coach reports total so that you can compare it to the Mustang. And that video review is up here. Now, there is a difference in the convertible and the hardtop, mostly just price, and it's not too much of a difference. But remember, this isn't a high demand vehicle. And this vehicle is also available in a manual and an automatic. And we'll go through the different features and what's on this vehicle, give you some pluses and minuses. Right out of the box, there's a few minuses I wanna cover when we get to technology and some other areas. But you do need to know about this before you make a purchase. And before you make a decision, whether it's Camaro or Mustang or any other convertible, check with your insurance agent. That is the difference that may make you buy one vehicle over another, because some of these insurance rates are pretty high on certain vehicles, depending on motor, depending on placement value. So something to keep in mind. Let's take it for a drive. Putting that convertible top down, that's really what this vehicle is all about. And it does a really nice job putting it in a nice little package in back so you don't have to worry about putting on a tonneau cover. It is a power top and that's something that's available on all the Camaro convertibles and that's also on the Mustang convertible. So it's just a little nice thing to have. We talked about the three engine options that are available in the Camaro. The 3.5 liter V6 does zero to 60 in just under five seconds. That's not that fast. Considering it has 335 horsepower, 284 pound-feet of torque, it should have a slightly faster zero to 60, but that's why they have that big V8 engine, if that's what you're looking for. The performance is good, especially when you're getting on a highway. It's really nice to drop the top. I happen to be here in Florida. Typically, I'm in the Buffalo area, but it is a little cold to be driving a convertible. And since I'm here, I had to take advantage of getting a convertible. Comparing the 2.3 liter engine of the Mustang to this 3.5 liter V6 is really not a fair comparison. It'd be more like the two liter engine. Of course, once you go to that GT, you're now in the ZL1 category, and then you're talking about Shelby's and a whole nother animal. And we reviewed the GT500 if you want the premium top of the line, and that review is up here. Fuel economy combined is 22 miles to the gallon. Pretty good, under five seconds, a little disappointing. I mean, it should have a more throatier sound. It sounds good, but it sounds like a V6 engine. And I think they could do a little bit with maybe bringing that exhaust note through the audio system, which a lot of manufacturers are doing. And typically I don't like it, but when you're driving a car like this, you almost kind of want that throaty muscle car sound. And I think that's missing. But overall, when you're looking at performance for this V6 engine, it earns a seven. As we drive through some of the twisty roads that are, believe it or not, there are twisty roads out here. I found a few of them. You can see how this vehicle handles. It's not just the input and the contact to the ground, but it's also the brakes, the ride, and the different drive modes. You can go into snow and ice if you want to drive this during the winter. I highly suggest winter tires because it is rear wheel drive as all the versions are. There is a touring and there is a sport, and that's my favorite mode, especially when you drop the top. The handling is really important on a vehicle like this because you wanna take it for a ride, a little spirited maybe. This is not a performance car. You step up to a higher performance Camaro or Mustang if that's what you're looking for. But overall, when you're looking at this vehicle as far as handling on a daily drive, 
just enjoying what it's all about, this vehicle for handling earns an eight. When you're looking at safety with a convertible, people are sometimes concerned, but actually you should not be concerned in the Camaro convertible or the Mustang. In the case of the Camaro, it has a five star safety rating, which is excellent. And what that means to you is that you're not just getting some of the emergency braking, some of the safety features, besides the obvious, the seatbelts, the airbags and so forth, you've got a backup camera. And when you flip this little switch, you have an actual backup camera. That is a safety feature for sure. It is something that is not available on every vehicle that's out there and Mustang certainly does not have that. I think it's a huge asset to have that available because the visibility, which we'll talk about next, does have some restrictions. When you're looking at the vehicle as a whole, you can tell right away that this vehicle has high door sills, which we'll talk about in visibility, but part of that is part of that side impact safety. When it comes to safety for this vehicle, because of the top safety ratings, but you do have to buy up on some of these safety packages, which I find a little frustrating. I'm waiting for every manufacturer to make it standard. It earns an eight. When you're looking at visibility, I always suggest that people sit in the driver's seat and look out the front. There is a long hood and a very short windshield. And because of that, it kind of restricts some of your visibility. That's fine, not unusual, not any different than the Mustang. You're looking at the sill, it's high. So if you're sitting in the back seat, you're really not seeing much. We'll talk about that in seating. But this means that you got your arm up really high. There's a few things in this vehicle that I find oddly designed. And that's probably why we'll give it the rating of design, which you'll see in a few minutes. When you're looking at visibility out the back, thank goodness for this camera because it is very limited. The car looks amazing from the outside, but its visibility is a huge issue out the back. And because of that, for visibility, it earns a five. Seating comfort is critical no matter what you drive. And I always say you've got to sit in this passenger seat and in the driver's seat because if you're not comfortable, it's never going to get more comfortable. You can get an eight way power seat for the driver's side. This is good because one of the things it doesn't have and still doesn't have all the way back to my original Camaro report, which you can check out up here is no lumbar. I don't understand why it's not available. These seats are not comfortable. Yes, there's eight way adjustable seats, but there's no lumbar and they're only six way adjustable on the passenger side. Again, no lumbar. And these are huge factors because I've never found these Camaro seats to be comfortable. And most people that own these vehicles go, oh, it's not about the comfort, da, da, da. Well, you know what? Even the Mustang on the entry level has lumbar on the driver's side, maybe not on the passenger side. So if you sit in these seats and you're uncomfortable, this is going to be a factor on the long haul. You own this vehicle for two, three years. The last thing you want to be is uncomfortable. So keep that in mind when you're looking at seating position. Also note that these seat belts are permanently fixed. There's no adjustability as there are in most convertibles. So make sure that seat belt's not cutting your neck because that is very frustrating frustrating to a lot of people. Let's take a look at the second row and see what kind of comforts back there and we'll give it a rating. Sitting back here in the second row, there is no room. There is really tight for two people. It's only designed for four, much less room than that of the Mustang. There is a pocket behind the passenger seat and a wireless charger here. It's kind of an odd spot because you can't slide over or move anything over and honestly, there's like this much room. Uh, truthfully, the back seats are really not that great. And overall for seating comfort, because of the lack of support on both front seats, it earns a six. When you're looking at technology, this eight inch screen is standard. But one of the things I have to say is I want you to see the angle of the screen. Can you see how angled that is? I mean, it's at a pretty sharp angle. And why that's important is when you look at the screen and you're sitting here, it tilts inward and quite a strong, aggressive angle inward. I would say maybe 15 to 20 degrees. And on my original Camaro review, this is one of the things I complained about. It was very difficult to, to actually see what I was looking at because you had almost tilt your head down. And I understand they probably did that because of glare, but this is the only vehicle I've ever seen. And I've reviewed hundreds of vehicles where it's not flat. That would be flat. And you can see there's such a, a dramatic gap where it's not flat. And that's sort of frustrating to me from a technology standpoint. It has a really nice interface. So when you're looking at this basic interface, you get your satellite radio, you've got your navigation, it's got wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that's standard, I think that's great. Of course, you can go to all these really easy to use controls 
and Marketplace and everything's right here. Amazon, Alexa, they've done a great job, but what is the deal with the angle? That is ridiculous. Looking at the gauges directly in front of us, we've got some pretty standard gauges. You got your tack, which you need, and you got your speedometer, which you need, and those are standard. But when you look at the gauges here, these are digital. And I think that's a great idea to have a combination of the two. So they've done a nice job, but this is really frustrating. When you're looking at technology as a whole, they've done a lot, putting in a nice audio system, and you have to upgrade to the higher trim levels to get some of the cool things that you'd want to add to this vehicle. And when you're looking at the basics, we'll cover this in features, but technology-wise is kind of limited, and it just earns a seven. I like the flat bottom wheel because it's really easy to get in and out of vehicles. Heated steering wheel, that's also excellent. And of course, you've got your cruise control, very normal controls, everything to change that in front of you. You've got your audio system, and this is part of your favorite setup. You've got your paddle shift here, minus and plus, your standard stocks, which have your wiper blades and your turn signals and headlights. Really easy to use. On the door, you have your locks, unlocks your memory seat, and of course your window lift and for the rear windows it's right here you press this button and then you can lift the rear window and same thing on the left side very easy to do good for when you got that convertible top going up and down in the center you've got a lot of controls that are available to you you can adjust those whether you're looking at fuel economy or you just want to see what the speed is in front of you you've got a couple options to play with and that's always good as well you taught we talked about the center screen right here and then right up there, we have the ability to close the top. So up, open and close. And here comes the top. You can see it in the rear view mirror. And here it comes, this is a bit aggressive. Mustang is very comparable. And that's it. You can also do it when you're driving at very slow speeds, which is only good if you get caught in the rain. You can see in the rear view mirror, that's right there. One of the nice features in the rear view mirror is if you flip it, it is an actual camera. We're here at the beach. You might as well enjoy it while we're here in Florida. And that's one of the things I always say, you gotta be careful that you have that option. That's a great option, by the way. One of the neat things is this dial around the outside of the air vent. It's for heating and cooling. You turn to the left to increase the temperature. You can see it right there, or to the right to decrease the temperature. It's also on the center screen right here in front of you. Heated and ventilated seats, very nice. Of course, your regular controls, your sink, your automatic, and again, for the passenger side, same thing. Rear and front defroster, which is excellent, and then your fan. So these are normal things. Going further back, you've got your standard Prindle. I do like the lines across the top, the, the Camaro logo. But you know, there's a lot of hard plastic in here. I mean, I'm really surprised how hard the plastic is. Why does that mean something? Someone asked me, why is that important? Why is the hard plastic an issue? Well, when you're spending this kind of money on a car, $44,000, you should have some nice softer touch features. Uh, this is your mode to change your driving mode. And when you do, you can see it right there. There's your touring, your snow and ice, and your sport. And that just changes the information that you need. It's nothing that's dramatic other than those simple changes. In addition, you've got your parking brake here and then your 12 volt outlet, which I think is a strange spot because you're plugging in a radar detector. You got this long line going up to the windshield and that means that you're gonna to have to have this cord going right across. You've got your cup holders and in the glove box, there is not much other than a two USB connections and a piece of rubber. Across the back, we talked about the Wi-Fi and seating and that's about it. Not as many features as you would think out of my camera gear over there. <laughs> but as far as features overall for the Camaro, compared to the Mustang and compared to others in the class, it earns a six. Looking at this front end, it does look like a 69 Camaro. It has that nice look. Matte black, which is good for bugs and whatever might stick to the front of this, you can get that off. It is a functional grill as well as the lower grill is functional. A nice little splitter, not too aggressive. The LED lights are new for 2021 and I think it looks pretty mean. I like the RS logo. RS stands for Rally Sport. It, and then there's also SS, which is Super Sport. So back in the day you could get SS and RS and this is just one of those carryovers that people appreciate. RS meaning Rally Sport. It's pretty cool, a little bit modified and you'll see that as you go around the vehicle both inside and out. The wheels that are standard on the Camaro are 18 inch. When you purchase the Rally Sport package, you get these 20 inch wheels, which are on all season. On the performance side, they're a Goodyear tire, but I like the fact that it fills the wheelhouse. And that's really important when you're looking at a muscle car. This isn't that muscle car family. Is it a muscle car with this motor? Not really. 
but the fact is that it fills the wheelhouse, so it gives it a cooler look. And these cars have always looked like matchbox cars. You want to pick one up and put it in your pocket. By the way, this color is Wild Cherry Tint Clear Coat. Really cool color, and that's also new for this year. The wheels are alloys. There are different wheel choices. So again, when you go to build it and you look on the configurator, you'll see what's there. Nice looking package, and they did a good job. Going back, you got the wheel arches that are factory, your Camaro logo, which is the same logo they used on my 76 Camaro way back when, don't even go there. And you can see the body lines are really nice. They're modern. The mirrors are small. You got a lot of black matte here as well. As we move our way back, you can see this tonneau cover is nicely designed, very sporty looking, almost Corvette-esque. It's the little sister to the Corvette. As you work your way around to the back, this rear spoiler is a bit futuristic for this car. Actually, I think it's too much. It needs to have more of that Rally Sport original design that was on the Camaro. And then also you've got this fin here. This is where your satellite radio goes. It's got to go somewhere. It just looks too futuristic maybe for this car. And looking over here, you've got the taillights. They're also new. The split in the taillights, LEDs as well, reminding you have a Rally Sport. And the exhaust system has two chrome tips. That's part of the Rally Sport package. This is a very high bumper. It's one of the negatives of owning a Camaro. And we'll talk about that when we go to storage near the end, just before value, because that's one of the things that makes this car look so cool, but it also doesn't make it very functional. And those are things you need to think about. When it comes to design overall for the 2021 Camaro, it earns an eight. When you're looking at the quality and the build of the new Camaro, it is a beautiful car and amazing color choices are offered this year and they've removed a few color choices as well. On the exterior, I'm really impressed with the build quality built here in the USA, but on the interior, there's a lot of plastic parts and some of the design components, such as the tilted screen and some of the hard plastic inside, kind of is disappointing. There's a three year, 36,000 mile warranty. So keep in mind, once you're outside that three year window, there is a five year, 50,000 mile drive line for the power train warranty. So those are things you need to keep in mind. So if you're leasing it, I don't recommend leasing beyond three years. When you're looking at the quality of this vehicle overall, it earns an eight. Going around to the back, when you open the trunk lid, you'll note that it is a very high liftover and a very small space. Also note when the convertible top is down, it does take up this space here in the trunk. That leaves you only with 9.1 cubic feet of storage. When the Mustang top is down, it does not impede on the trunk space and also is an easier lift over. You'll note that anytime someone rents one of these, you'll find their luggage in the back seat because it's so difficult to lift your luggage up and over and the space is quite small. The starting price of the Camaro is $33,500. Now we have an RS package. We paid for this wild cherry paint color, which I think is really cool and there's an upgrade to the V6 engine. That brought our test vehicle in at $44,600. Remember, these prices are negotiable. They're not making the Camaro any longer, which makes them not just harder to get, but it also means there's gonna be some of them sitting on the lot. So you wanna do your homework and check around on places like Car Gurus and see what's available online before you make your final decision. When you're looking at the price point of the Camaro compared to the Mustang, they're pretty equivalent. Remember the Mustang has outsold the Camaro and the Corvette combined for many years, but this vehicle still has a huge following. And if you own an older Camaro or have owned one, which I have, this is something that you want to add to your collection before they're gone. Hopefully it doesn't come back as an SUV because that would be really disappointing. But when you're looking at value overall for this vehicle, it earns an eight. When you add up all 10 categories in the 2021 Camaro 3LT, now remember our vehicle has the V6 engine, not the standard two liter engine. And I wish it had the bigger V8 engine because it would be even more fun to drive. And I like a lot of the features that are in this car. They did a really nice job and it does outperform the Mustang when it comes to handling. But performance wise, there's only one engine option with the Mustang other than the five liter, unless you're going all the way to the top. And the Camaro offers two engine options. So these are things you need to think about. Again, that's gonna be impacted by insurance and of course your budget. There are other vehicles in this category such as the Challenger and the Charger and the Supra and we've reviewed them all on our channel. Car Coach Reports is in English and in Spanish. There's a link down below you want to check that out because we're always putting up new information that we're not getting on videos from our different contributors. When you're looking at the total of all 10 categories for this vehicle, it earns a 72. If you have additional questions on this car that I did not cover, put it in the comments down below. Make sure to like and share if you got value from this video. We wanna open up the conversation and let people ask their questions so you can learn. Did you buy a Camaro? Did you buy a Mustang? 
why did you buy one over the other? We talk about all the different cars in this category and a lot of new vehicles that are coming out in our podcast, Total Car Score with Javier Mota and Carl Brower. We have a lot of fun just talking about what's coming out so that you can learn more. And if you like cars, you will love our podcast. As the Camaro evolves, as well as the auto industry with electric vehicles, autonomous, and a lot of other information, I'll be posting that on my social media, all platforms at Lauren Fix. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for subscribing and we appreciate your comments. Take care.